The following podcast is a proud member of the Blue Collar Roots Network. Find all the shows by visiting bluecollarroots.com. Here's the president and primary owner of True Tech Tools, licensed engineer, and the nicest BS artist you will ever meet, Bill Spone. Having worked in the HVACR and building performance markets for 30 years, I've noticed the need for scientifically rooted information on how to do a better job. The goal is to try to create a better, more knowledgeable workforce of technicians by helping these technicians, especially HVAC and building performance, kind of come together. One person called it, Bill, you're trying to create a kumbaya moment. I'm working with the Blue Collar Roots Network, which you will find at bluecollarroots.com. There are many other fine trade-oriented podcasts there. In today's episode, you're going to hear from me. I'm talking a little bit about my collected knowledge about airflow testing. This will be part one. We're going to do this in several parts here. The information contained in this podcast today is also part of a series of articles that I'm writing called Tools and Test Instruments Corner for today's AC magazine. It's todays-ac.com. You can also go there and click on publications to look at past issues. I've been doing this for about six months now. I'd like to leave you with one quote of the day before the episode begins. This is a quote actually I'm going to attribute to myself. Wisdom is merely the accumulation of remembered mistakes. So now, with that, on to the podcast. Welcome back to another edition of the Building HVAC Science Podcast. This time we're going to cover a topic which gets spoken about a lot, and especially a lot lately. That's the topic of airflow. So this is a pretty gnarly topic in HVACR. I spent a lot of time trying to understand this in the last 15 years. And I'll be the first to admit it is challenging. And you'll learn something new every time you peel back a layer of the airflow onion and likely shed a few tears in the process. Well, in 2015, I boldly created a goal not to go where no man had gone before, well, sort of, but to fully understand airflow during that year. I called it the Project AirQuest 2015. Well, I cannot now claim I fully understand airflow. I did get to visit with a lot of smart folks at several manufacturers of airflow measuring products, and I learned a great deal and opened up some great connections to build upon. Putting on my engineering hat for a moment, in the most basic sense, the science of HVACR is the science of energy transfer. In many cases, it's heat transfer, but it can also, energy can transfer during phase and psychrometric changes in substances. Now, you're taking part in the science every time that you work on a system. That's pretty cool, huh? Oftentimes, a plentiful heat transfer fluid that surrounds us is the air, which accomplishes the energy and heat transfer, which we're seeking after. And knowing the rate at which this energy transfer is happening can tell us an awful lot about how our HVACR systems are performing. The amount of energy transferred is proportional to the mass of the air that's flowing, or it's really, it's a mass flow rate in engineering terms. This thankfully leads us now to a more familiar term, CFN or cubic feet per minute of airflow, which is really an assessment of the mass flow rate of the air. Okay, so all we're looking for in airflow is to measure the CFM. We're we're good, right? Well, not so fast. Air is compressible, so its density will vary with its pressure barometric pressure and static pressure in the duct or the container for the air. Now, additionally, airflow also changes its density with temperature and humidity content. This is a key concept as the density of air will also affect how it performs as a heat transfer fluid. Generally, air is not well contained in HVACR systems. That is, it's allowed to leak. Air is also sneaky. You can't see it, so it can slip by and squirt by you and your measuring device. So it's hard to be sure you're actually measuring all the airflow. So that's why in a lot of HVACR pros use capture hoods. Hmm. They're capturing the sneaky air. The sneaky air is often expensive air because the HVAC system has created this air with the correct temperature, humidity, airflow, delivered it to the correct location, etc. It serves no one to misplace or lose that air. Oh, And by the way, the air's density may also affect the way you measure air. I call this the Erzenberg Uncertainty Principle, pivoting off the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle in physics. You can look that up on Wikipedia if you're really interested in that. These are some of the major factors combining to make airflow such a challenge to measure. 
let's pick up here and take a look at covering some airflow measurement applications, some tools and techniques. Now, my company, True Tech Tools, we approach customer questions by asking, why are you making the measurement? We do this to better understand their goals and to fit them with the appropriate tool for their application, like fitting a suit. Let's make sure this instrument looks good on you. In a residential system, I think of four main applications for airflow measurement. That's system, supply, return, and mechanical ventilation. So system airflow, supply airflow, return airflow, and mechanical ventilation. If you're familiar at all with home performance or building science concepts, there are actually two bonus airflows that can be measured, the shell or enclosure CFM leakage and the duct air leakage. These are commonly referred to as the blower door or envelope test and the duct leakage or sometimes the duct blaster test. Duct blaster is a registered trademark of the Energy Conservatory. Now these are two very important tests which many HVAC contractors may not have considered up to now as they happen to be outside of the box, outside of the mechanical system. We'll discuss these in more in depth at another time. Did you know that Bacharach has been a leader in the design and manufacturing of combustion analysis equipment since 1909? Actually, I knew that fact because I used to work there for 10 years. What a great company. During their fall promotion, you can save on the purchase of a new combustion analyzer with rebates worth up to $350. That offer includes a free two-year subscription for their exclusive B-Smart Sensor Exchange program with the purchase of a Firite Intech or Insight Plus. With the B-Smart Sensor Exchange program, pre-calibrated sensors are shipped directly to you. No more hassle, no more downtime when you return your analyzer to the factory for calibration. Download your rebate form today at mybackrack.com forward slash offers. That's my B-A-C-H-A-R-A-C-H dot com forward slash offers. And enter the promo code HVAC Science. That's HVAC S C I E N C E. That will let them know that you heard about it here on the Building HVAC Science Podcast. This is a time-limited offer, so be sure to do it today. I'll peel back some of the layers in the test methods now and refrain from judging which is better one than the other, as sometimes the needs and the situations in the fields differ pretty greatly. Now, not everyone needs a fast and accurate measurement, nor can everyone afford the most expensive tools, nor can every tool be used in all instances. So hopefully I'll be imparted knowledge of correctly testing and knowing your measurement quality. System airflow is usually measured at the unit. So that's the first one we talk about system airflow. Now it's mainly measured to determine overall system performance, perhaps in conjunction with a change in total heat. That's sensible plus latent heat. And that's pretty neatly described by the enthalpy number. And it's trying to answer the question, am I creating all the BTUs per hour or tons of cooling as the manufacturer, installer, and customer have paid for? So am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Usually you need to know system airflow to determine that. Typical system airflow measurements include ones I call bulk measurements, like temperature rise, something called the true flow grid test, static pressure drop using the equipment specific chart, or using a duct blaster or duct leakage tester and the pressure matching method. And there's also ones I call scanning tests, pitot tube, used of course with a manometer, hot wire anemometer, and a rotating vane mini anemometer. And sometimes assumed measurements, for example, the airflow of a central return represents the system airflow because I assume there's no loss from the central return back to the unit. So sometimes you can say it's total system airflow is done by just using a central return, but you're making an assumption there and be sure you know you're making an assumption before you go too far with that number. So bulk measurements like buying in bulk from your favorite warehouse store are commonly thought of as more economical time-wise because you can set up the test and you can walk away with one number, total system CFM. In contrast to bulk measurements, scanning methods involve a higher degree of user interaction and additional measurements and calculations. For example, knowing where to put the probe in the duct and what the cross-sectional area is. The temperaturized method may be used for fossil fuels and electric furnaces. However, because the heat content of natural gas, one of those fossil fuels, varies even from hour to hour. And I've seen it actually at the AGA labs. I've seen it vary from hour to hour. That's another story. And or the heat content of fuel oil will vary from tank to tank. The temperature rise method should only be used to get the airflow close 
to the manufacturer's recommendation and really can't be used for airflow AC system capacity verification. Additional heat can be picked up from the distribution air motor and drive up to 300 watts or 1,024 BTUs higher reading. So you have to think about all these factors. They're going to be part of that number that you're coming up with. Now, the best place to take the measurement for the temperature method is out of line of sight of any kind of heated surface, like the electric heater or the heat exchanger. Otherwise, the radiant heat from the heat exchanger or this electric heating strip and not the heat of the air will be included. So that's going to jack up your number. And don't forget to account for any kind of things like a bypass humidifier. Again, don't let that sneaky air get by you. All the air has to be accounted for when you're taking this bulk measurement. So now what do you do with this temperature number you have? Oh, hang on a second. You actually need two temperature measurements, one before and one after whatever system component is heating the air. For example, the heat exchanger or strip heater. So this still isn't too bad, but temperature does not equal airflow. So you need an equation to go from your temperature to your airflow. So your equation is the CFM equals the BTUs per hour divided by 1.08 times delta T. So CFM is the cubic feet per minute. That's the number you're after. The BTU output comes from another measurement. Well, wait a minute, another measurement? Got to take another measurement here? I thought this was supposed to be easy. Well, again, following the details here, Got to stick with the details. The 1.08 comes from an air-related factor, and it actually changes with air density. So if you want to have a better measurement, it's not going to always want to be 1.08 in your equation. And the delta T is a change in the air temperature measurement that you made. So all of a sudden, this is starting to seem a little bit complicated, and actually it is. The better a measurement you want to get, the more complicated things get. So if you're using electric heat or fossil fuel heating, you have to allow the appliance to reach steady state efficiency before taking your temperature measurements. Now, usually 10 minutes or so is sufficient for a stack temperature measurement to come to stability. For an electric furnace, you also need to measure the incoming volts and current draw and amps to the electric strip heaters. You need to enter this information in the following formula. CFM equals volts times amps times 3.14 all of that divided by 1.08 times the delta T. If it's in combustion, and the source of heat is combustion, natural gas, oil, or propane, the BTUs per hour comes from the BTU output times the BTU input times the steady state efficiency. Now, the steady state efficiency is a number you got to take from your combustion analyzer. So if you want to make a good measurement, you have to take actually some other background measurements here in order to add up to a good measurement for your airflow. If a combustion analyzer is not available, the manufacturer's literature could be used to determine the output BTUs of the furnace, provided the manifold pressure is correct, the orifices are designed for the heat content of the BTUs of the fuel used, or consistent with the design input of the furnace. You do not want to use efficiency information from the yellow energy guide label, as this is the AFUE, the Annualized Fuel Utilization Efficiency, and this takes into account the efficiency losses at startup of the equipment and other seasonal factors. So this method we talked about, temperaturized method, will give you an approximate CFM, although it will be very close to the actual if the measurements made are accurately conforming to all the steps we mentioned here and that the input of the appliance is correct. I'm going to wrap up here for right now and let these thoughts sink in. Next time we'll come back and we'll look at other bulk measurements used in airflow system measurements. I'd like to thank you for listening to this latest podcast, and I hope you grabbed a few tidbits of information from the, my collected knowledge there, maybe my wisdom about airflow testing. Now, if you want to keep up with other things that I find interesting, you can follow my page on Facebook by typing buildinghvacscience.com into the search bar. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor of the Building HVAC Science podcast, please email me at bill at bluecollarroots.com. Now, disclaimer, some of the topics we discuss require technical training. We don't know how far and broad reaching this podcast goes. So for proper interpretation or safe execution, you got to be a trained pro. If you are a trained pro, go right ahead. Make sure you have the right training, the right equipment. But if you're not, please consult with and hire a pro. 
Also, if you're in the market for tools or test instruments mentioned in the podcast, take a look at what True Tech Tools carries. That's T-R-U-T-E-C-H-T-O-O-L-S dot com. You can use the code HVACBS for a nice discount. In full disclosure, I'm that BS that's at the end there of HVACBS. I'm one of the co-owners of True Tech. As always, we'd like to thank you for listening and following us on the Building HVAC Science channel. If you have not subscribed, please do so. Clicking subscribe will ensure that you're up to date on everything that's going on in the world of Building HVAC Science. And lately, we're starting to get some dialogues with questions and answers from individuals that are interested in some of their own problems that you're trying to solve. That's really great. We're building a community. Thanks again, and have a great day.